Hi guys, it's Paula and I hope you are doing well. This is going to be an updated video of what my current makeup graveyard looks like. Here's a story on the makeup graveyard. This is Emily and Max's fault. This all started back when Emily and Max, Emily from Emily and Max, created the graveyard project pan. By the way, it's coming up again for its third year on April 30th. So if you want to join that project, you're more than welcome to. Details will be coming, but it starts April 30th. So once again, I'm thinking about my graveyard products. Now, three years ago when Emily started this project, I personally felt like she created a project for me because part of the project was focusing on graveyard products. And graveyard products are any products that were in a project pan but the project ended and you never met your goal on them and so they're still around you never finished them or did whatever you wanted to do like hit pan and so then they fall into the graveyard of makeup and project panning products and I thought that was such a brilliant concept I related to it very much and as a result of these videos a word for describing this problem of mine was created because I didn't have a word to describe all these products that had been in projects but I never met my goal on. So all of a sudden I had a word for them, the graveyard products, and I would always talk about my huge graveyard, my huge graveyard. So in 2019, I received a request to film a video talking about exactly what my graveyard looks like because I kept referring to it. And so I did. So I will link that video down below if you didn't see it. That is the first video showcasing what products were in my graveyard. So this is the second video, this is the follow-up. My graveyard has grown a lot. It is much bigger than it was in 2019. I'm not surprised. I guess I could say that if last week's products I pan on video was my gigantic pat on the back for all of my hard work, this video truly showcases every one of my failures in project panning. So. I figured it would be a good time to talk about this, especially following my products I have pan on, plus the Graveyard Project Pan is coming around again soon. This video was requested by a subscriber way back in January, and I'm just getting around to it now, but it was labor intensive. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to film this in two seatings because there is so much stuff over here. It took me days to pull all this stuff out, to go through my Instagram, to go through my YouTube, and see you know what is currently in my graveyard because I have done so many projects since 2019 so <laughs> it was a lot of work um, good news first of all in preparation for this video I rewatched my old graveyard products video and 18 of the products that were featured in that video I have since finished and nine of the products I talked about in that video are currently being worked on in projects. So <laughs> I guess that's a silver lining to all of this. I am working on them. Let's just get into it. Before I sit here and roast myself for all of my project panning failures, let's take a minute to roast myself for my failure in math. I am, I have to give up on doing percentages in videos because I screw it up every single time. Way back when, and I never talked about this, but I'm aware of it, but way back when I was doing my how many years experiment with Jessica and Amanda, I got my percentages wrong in that video and a couple people picked up on it and pointed it out in the comments. And so I pinned the comment in case anybody else saw it. I can't remember the specifics, but I think I told you guys that I actually had 130 years worth of makeup when the truth was, for the categories that I was talking about, it was actually more like 500 years. Way wrong on the percentages, I got it completely wrong, and then I did it again the other day. In my products I have pan on video, I did the percentage of my total eyeshadow pans to the percentage of eyeshadows that actually have pan showing, and I posted that the percentage was 0.013, when in truth, the actual number is 1.3. So from now on, if I wanna talk about anything related to percentages, I'm either going to have to check with somebody who knows how to do math, or I'm gonna to have to go back to third grade and do it all over again, because obviously I've completely forgotten how to formulate percentages. 
I guess it's one of those, if you don't use it, you lose it kind of things because I've forgotten it and I'm pretty sure I learned it back in third grade. And that is so embarrassing because I know what the reputation is of American education and I am not representing American education well. But I'm sure I was taught all of this and I have since forgot it. So don't blame the American school system for my failures and I apologize for my mistakes. All right, so let's talk about my makeup graveyard. There's a couple of non-makeup categories that I pulled from for this video. Let's start with perfume, scents, fragrances. There are three fragrances that are in my graveyard. The first one is this Victoria's Secret Body Spray in Secret Crush. I think you can see the nail polish marks all up and down the side. My goal is to finish this and it didn't happen. This scent right here is from La Vanilla. It's Vanilla Summer. I love this scent. It has been in at least two projects. It's about halfway gone. Didn't finish it. And finally, I have another body spray. This is Elderberry and Fig. Didn't finish it. I've made some good use on it, but it's still around. All right, let's talk about my nail polish graveyard. There's seven. I have this Mary Kay shade right here in Black Raspberry. I have this Revlon Red. Love that red nail polish. I do not love red nail polish. I have this Orly Glitter Polish. It's called Ice Crystal. I have this Finger Paints Polish in Heart Auction. I have the Sally Hansen polish in black and blue. I have this Bath and Body Works polish in the shade Birch. Yes, Bath and Body Works used to make nail polish. And I think I have two of them or three, maybe just two now. I think I had three at one point, but I gave one away. I have an old Milani polish. This is called Juicy Glow. And finally, I have my Wet n Wild polish. This is a Franken polish. It is a combination of probably 20 polishes over the years, and it really is not good for painting nails with anymore. And so I keep this in the bathroom, and this is the nail polish I try to use to mark my packages for progress. If it doesn't work, if this won't show up on the package, I'll grab for something with a deeper color, but when I can, I use this to mark my bottles for my products to show progress because I really don't want to paint my nails with this anymore. But yeah, it's about 20 polishes dumped in here. It's crazy. Okay, I'm gonna to continue to try and categorize these products as much as possible and I'm gonna present them in the order that I apply my makeup. So let's move on to face primers. I have two. This is my Clean and Clear Shine Control Mattifier. I wasn't sure what category to put this in for a long time, but at this point I am calling it a primer. Um, this has been in the Graveyard Project Pan for at least two years, and it was in another project before that, and it's still going. I'm hoping that this will not be in my 20, 22 inventory. I'm hoping this will be gone this year. It's down to about here, so um, it should go, but we'll see. And this is my Too Faced Primed and Peachy Cooling Matte Primer. I love this so much. It's a favorite. I have bought backups of this, and this was in a project. I did not finish it. Okay, for foundations, I have six. Six foundations that were in projects I did not finish in the time that they were in those projects. This one is a Tarte foundation. Look at that gorgeous packaging. It is so beautiful. This is called the Amazonian Colored Clay Liquid Foundation. It's in the shade Medium. This is pretty deep on me. I don't know if you could tell just by looking at the packaging, but I can only wear this for like one month out of the year and then it's too dark for me the rest of the year. So that's why it has taken me forever to get through this because I it's too dark for me. And I do get to this shade, but only for about a month. I could continue using this with a lighter um, foundation and I definitely might do that, but it's just been going really slow in the past and I think it's been in two projects. Still kicking. 
This is the Physician's Formula Super BB Cream. I'm actually hoping to finish this this year. I haven't, it's not currently in a project, but I do hope to have this in a project. It's gotta be down to about here. It's almost gone. And this is another like summery shade. It's a little bit dark, but I'm hoping to finish this this year. It will be in a project soonish. Two more foundations that are mostly in my summer shade. This is the Too Faced Peach Perfect Comfort Matte Foundation. This is the shade Natural Beige. This is my summer shade and my Hourglass Foundation Stick in Warm Beige Summer Shade. These two foundations are pretty old. They're hand-me-downs from my friend Jamie. This is the Maybelline True Illusion Liquid to Powder Makeup in the shade True Ivory. This is certainly not my summer shade. This is a pretty light shade. Um, haven't worked on this in a long time. And this is a Neutrogena Compact Oil-Free Compact Foundation in Classic Porcelain. No pan showing. I got a long way to go with both of those, but they were in projects and I did not finish them. Okay, next let's talk about concealers and color correctors. I have seven, which again is shocking. I don't know how. I have so many products that I worked on and then stopped working on. Like that's the weird thing. Like who works on them, gets halfway through them and then just stops and abandons it. It's weird. You would think I would just roll it over into another project and keep working on it, but I stopped and I haven't gotten back to it. This is a Bobbi Brown Duo. One side is a concealer and one side is like a powder that you could use to set the concealer. No pan. Good dips on both of them, but no pan. This is one of my oldest concealers. This is from MAC. It is the Studio Finish Concealer in C25. I have the biggest dip ever in this pot. It is huge, huge. If I use this for a week, I would probably hit pan. I cannot believe how big the dip is. It is huge. Holy cow. I would love to finish this off. This is my Tarte concealer. It's a shape tape in the shade Light Sand. I don't know how far along I am in this. There's no windows showing or anything like that, but I've used it a ton. This is my It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. It was a sample that came in an Ipsy bag, but I didn't finish it. This will last forever. The little bit, a little bit of this goes the longest way. This is the Physician's Formula Super BB Concealer. I don't remember really working on this, but it was a long time ago. And then these two are both color correctors. This, of course, is my Maybelline um, Master Camo in the shade Apricot. It is too dark for me to use as an under eye concealer, which is what I bought it for. I've received a lot of good ideas on how I could use this, and I just haven't tried it. I've just kind of been ignoring this product since I realized how difficult it would be for me to use this since it's way too deep for me. And this is the Pixi Color Corrector in Brightening Peach. Great shade for me, loved the product. Had it in a project or two, didn't meet my goal, and then abandoned it for some reason. Okay, next let's talk about face powders. I only have three, that doesn't seem too bad, especially compared to some of these other categories. The first one is this loose powder from Elizabeth Arden. I think this is another shade that's like a summery shade. So I can only use this in the warmest times of the year and then it will be too dark for me any other time. So I think that's why I wasn't able to seal the deal on this. This is a prescriptives powder. It looks like a mess. It kind of worked like a mess. It's called the Triplets All Over Face Powder in Cool 02. If I can recall, this was too light of a shade to be a bronzer or a contour and too dark of a shade to be a face powder. And I felt like it was just way too cool for my skin. It ended up making me look quite muddy and I didn't like it, but I haven't gotten rid of it and I haven't panned it. I need to try it again and see if I have a different experience 
maybe project 10 uses would be a good place to roll this into and see if I could figure this out because I haven't touched it in years. And finally, I have my Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder. I love this product. This was in my past, present, future project pan. I used it a ton, but when I restarted that project again this year, I decided to take it out because as much as I enjoy this product, I don't really want to pan it. I, I really want to just have it and enjoy it and use it when I need it. It's still pretty new. I don't feel like this is an old product. And I have a lot of older products that I would really like to use up and get rid of before I work hard at panning this. So I took it out of a project intentionally so that I could enjoy it. And I can't say that about too many of these products, but I had set the goal of using this up kind of half-heartedly knowing that this is more than a year's worth of product for me, especially if I'm just using this to set my under eyes. Okay, let's talk about bronzers. From what I can tell, I have three that are currently in the graveyard. The first one is this deluxe sample of Too Faced Chocolate Soleil. I think I worked on this a couple of years ago. I can start, I am starting to see the rings showing through on this and I used it a ton. I really like this product quite a bit. This isn't the typical ready bronzer that I love, but this works quite well for me. And um, when the project ended, I put it away to start working on something different and I haven't had a chance to get back to it, but I would love to work on this again really soon. Next, I have this kind of no-name bronzer. I'm honestly not even sure if it's a bronzer or a blush, but I was using it as a bronzer. I depotted this so long ago that I don't recall what palette this was, what brand this was. I have no idea what this product is, which is a shame because I love this. I love this so much. I did a whole video swatching all of my stash to find dupes of this product because I love this Ready Brown blush bronzer so much that I wanted to see what else I had that could dupe this. So um, if I could find that video, I will link it down below. But I love this so much. This was in my Pan That palette for 2019, my magnetic palette filled with depotted singles. And I enjoyed working on this so very much. And my final bronzer comes from my Pan That palette 2017, which was my first time ever attempting a Pan That palette. This came out of my Too Faced Natural Face Palette. This was just called Bronzer Veil. I made a lot of good progress on this. I have to sneeze. But obviously I did not finish it. And for whatever reason, I didn't come back to it once that project ended. It's just been living its life in this magnetic palette. I did depot it, I think at the beginning of last year maybe. And, um, so it's not a palette anymore, but I do still have the single and it is definitely in my graveyard. Okay, let's talk blush. I have four. Two of them are cream blushes, two of them are powder blushes. The first one is my Becca cream blush in lychee opal. I love this blush so much, but it is hot pink. And it's hard to pull off a hot pink blush in the middle of winter. So I stopped working on this because I just felt like it was too bold for the winter and I wanted to wear a more like neutral, natural looking blush. But I have a huge dip on this and I would love to get back to this. We'll see. I also have my Maybelline Dream Bouncy Blush in the shade Peach Satin. This was part of the experiment where I had to prove if I could use this product up along with several other blush products within the year like a formula said we should be able to. And I worked on this every day for a year. I did kind of eventually hit pan, but look at how much product is still in there. It is unbelievable. I have this Laura Geller baked blush in honeysuckle. This was in one of my roulette pan collabs. I was hoping to hit pan on it, but it looks brand new still. It looks like I didn't use it at all. And finally, I have the blush from my Too Faced Natural Face Palette. Um, I do not remember what this was called, but yeah, I worked on this blush for a year and it does have a little crack in it from me depotting it, but I haven't touched this since, I don't know, 2018 or something. There's a good dip going on in here. Maybe I could finish it 
within another year, but I haven't touched it. I was really burnt out on peachy pink blushes after panning several peachy pink blushes over a couple years, and I've been really into more like neutral natural blushes or really bright pink or a matte pink, um, but like a shimmery peachy pink blush was all I panned for like three years straight and I got really sick of it, so. Okay, let's talk highlighter. I have four highlighters and a highlighting palette. There's a lot. First of all, I have my L'Oreal True Match Lumi Powder Glow Illuminator in Golden. This was also part of the experiment. I should have been able to use up this entire highlighter and then some within one year. Didn't happen. Didn't even happen at all. I did manage to hit some pan, which was good. And after using this every single day for a year, I felt like I deserved a break from it. And so I put it down and I haven't picked it up again. I have this Stila Heaven's Hue Highlighter in Opulence. I'm working on one of these right now in my 50 Shades of Purple project, but this one is a very like white with a gold, white and gold highlighter. I think I wanted to hit pan on it. Didn't happen. I have this Wet n Wild highlighter. It's been repressed into this Neutrogena compact, but it was one of the baked Wet n Wild highlighters and it broke from the grid that it was pressed onto. So I crumbled it up and repressed it into this palette or this compact and there's still so much product in here. I use this every day for months and months and months, maybe for a year. The reason I stopped working on this is because of the experiment. I wanted to start the year with the experiment using a brand new highlighter that I had never used even once before. And I had been working on this for months prior to the start of the experiment. So I put this away to work on the experiment and I never went back to it. This next one is a little highlighting duo. It might have even been an eyeshadow. It's just called Duo One. It's the Pacifica Natural Beauty Duo One. I'm assuming this is an eyeshadow. The way I like to use this is to just swirl my brush between the two and use it as a face highlight. It doesn't do much as an eyeshadow in my opinion, but I think it makes a really nice face highlight. So that's how I've been using it. My goal was probably to hit pan, did not happen. And finally, I have my Sleek palette in Solstice. I think I've had both of these in projects before, this top cream highlighter and this purpley lavender highlighter. And my goal for both of them was to hit pan and that didn't happen. I came really close to hitting pan on this purple, the powder, but the cream one looks like it still has a long ways to go. I haven't worked on this in a while either. Okay, I just found two more highlighters. These are both cream highlighters that I lost in the shuffle over here. This one is a very old All May stick. It's just called a three-in-one color stick. You could technically use this any way you want. You could use it as a cream eyeshadow, a lipstick, a highlighter, whatever. But I think it is a good shade for a face highlight for me and my skin tone. I used a bunch of this. I did not finish it. This is the fattest pencil I've ever seen in the makeup world. I have never found a sharpener big enough to sharpen this, which is a bit of a deterrent. I literally have to carve it with a razor blade when it gets dull, which is a little bit inconvenient, but I would love to get back to using this and finish it off. The cream highlighters I want to finish are like you have to take a number to get in line because I have so many cream highlighters in line before this one, but I would love to get back to this and the cap is breaking. And another cream highlighter is from Be A Bombshell. I remember not being really impressed with this. It's barely used at all. I need to get going on that. Need to get going on all of this okay let's talk about brow products i've been using an eyeshadow as my brow product for a long time what feels like years but i did work on two brow products that i did not meet my goal on 
The first one is this brow pencil from Maybelline. Super old. It's a good color for me though. It's just kind of a taupey brown. And I have my brow pomade from Kat Von. Hey. And I have my brow pomade from Kat Von D in the shade taupe. I have such a long way to go on this, but it wasn't a project and I did not meet my goal on it. So it's a graveyard product. Oh, I'm so overwhelmed by all these eyeshadows. Let's ignore them for a minute. Okay, let's talk about eye sticks because I don't know what else to refer to them. Some of them are eyeliners. Some of them are eyeshadow sticks. I don't know. For eyeliners, I have this plummy purple one. I thought about putting this in 50 shades of purple, but it didn't make the cut. I have these two from ABH. They're the metallic luster liners. One is in liquid gold and one is in liquid silver. I definitely prefer the gold over the silver, as you can tell. But both have been in projects. I have this itty bitty black eyeliner from Makeup Forever that I could not finish. I have this Ofra eyeliner in turquoise. I don't know what category this falls into. This is the Tarina Tarantino Aurum Magic Hour Smudge Pen. This has like a powder in the cap and um, a kind of springy sponge tip applicator that you can use to apply it. I bought it off a of Holt Look. I was never very impressed with this product. Did not finish it. And then these five are all like crayons. This is the Tarte Smolder Eyes in Palm Green. This is the Tarte Waterproof Shadow Stick in Mocha Berry. This is the Laura Mercier Caviar Stick in Rush. This is the Benefit Eye Bright Pencil. And this is a Glam Shadow Stick from NYX in the shade Illuminating Topaz. I don't think of this color blue being Topaz, but okay. Blue Topaz? I don't know. Okay, let's talk about eyeshadow singles. I have a whole bunch of eyeshadow singles that I'm gonna talk about in a bit. But as far as the compact, the singles, the, sing the real singles, not the depotted singles, but the real singles, I have like 21, over 20 over here. I don't know. There's so many. I think there's some that like snuck under my tush. But um, let me just go through all of these eyeshadow singles really quickly because there are so many. A lot of them I just wanted to hit pan on. Couldn't do it. Here are five Super Shock shadows I wanted to hit pan on. Couldn't make it happen. I have Weenie, I Heart This, Fringe, Bill, and Prickly Pear. Prickly Pear is completely cracked and broken, like right in half. So that's too bad. Did not hit pan on any of those. I have Stila's Kitten. I have... Cover effects in Celestial, I love this. I have an itty bitty sample of the Bare Minerals 5-in-1. And I have another one of those Lorac 3D Luster Drops. This one's in Opal. I talked about the one in 24K that was in my Project 10 uses recently. So this is another one that came from that set, but it's still going. Just need to add some water to revive it. The rest of these are singles that I was working to finish, but could not make happen. Didn't even really come close. This is Elf's Long Lasting Lustrous Eyeshadow in Soiree. I'm pretty sure Jessica annihilated one of these. I hit pan on it, but I didn't finish it. This is an old Stila Smudge Pot in Amber. I love this. I love this so much. I hope it's still good. I love it. This is a Maybelline Color Tattoo in Bad to the Bronze. I hit pan on it, but couldn't finish it. This is a L'Oreal Infallible Pigment in Amber Rush. This is the most famous eyeshadow ever. Well, one of them. And I barely made a dent in it. Another Infallible Pigment is Liquid Diamond. 
I used this, I made a dent in it, but there's still years and years worth of product. This is an oldie. This is from Mac. It's called the Venetian Tarnish Metal X Cream Shadow. I used to love this. This is one of those like dirty bronzy shades that I love so much. Still a ton of product in here. Didn't even come close to finishing it and it's very dry now. It's not cream anymore. I think I could still use it just as like a powder, but it was originally like a creamed powder. It was so cool. What a shame. This is a Makeup Forever cream base in number 13. This is one of the best and worst cream bases I've ever worked with in my life. I don't know if they still sell these or not, but these dry down permanent, they will not budge. You have to make sure you apply it perfectly the first time because once it dries down, it's not more moving. And if you apply it in a way that makes your eyelids look crinkly, they're gonna look crinkly and wrinkly and gross all day long. And if you apply it perfectly, your eyelids will look perfect all day long. I like this product, but it's a little bit finicky and difficult to work with, but um, it's really lasted a long time. I've had it forever. This was in my Pan That palette from last year. That was the Panning Solitaire. This is my Sephora single in Outrageous Metallic Beige. This is a ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in the shade Drift. I did hit pan on this. I put it in a project to finish it and I could not finish it. I love that shade though. This is a Loose Shadow from Ulta in the shade Quartz. Did not finish it. Got a long way to go. And finally, this is one of those Natasha Denona Chroma Duochrome Top Coats. Burnt Terracotta and Green. Did not finish it. Okay, I have some eyeshadow palettes. The first one is the Trio from my Panning Solitaire project last year. I still have two shadows left in here that I was not able to finish. So is that a duo now or is it still a trio? I also have the quad from my Panning Solitaire. This is the Milani Fierce Foil Eyeshine in Florence. I did not use this as much as I had hoped I would last year. I think the rest of these palettes in front of me, I just had a goal to hit a pan in any shade. None of these were actually in pan in every palette, but basically that's the goal I had set for them in whatever project they were in and I couldn't make it happen. This is a quad from Lorac. It is the Tease Me Truffles Quad. It looks brand new. <laughs> I did not hit a pan in any shade. This is my Too Faced Life's a Festival palette. Did not hit any pan. This is my Dose of Colors ice cream palette. This has been in a couple of projects. No pan. This is my Zulu by Juvia's Place palette. This kind of abruptly got rolled out of my deck of panning project last month, but my goal was to hit pan on the matte green shade and didn't happen. <laughs> and finally, I have my e.l.f. 100 pan palette. I've had this in several projects over the years and I do have three pans in this palette, but there are five pans that I had put in projects and didn't hit my goal on of hitting pan. This matte, cream shade over here, this shimmery gold shade right here, this orangey shade right here, this blue shade right here, and one of these silvers over here. I can't even remember which one it was. But yeah, there are five pans in here that I was supposed to hit, but have not hit, and now I'm currently working on this one right here in my Fifty Shades of Purple project, so. Okay, and here are 26 single depotted eyeshadows that have been in various projects over the years that I did not meet my goal on. A bulk of these were actually part of my Pan That palette for 2019, which was Pan as Old as Time, a collection of my oldest single depotted shadows. I feel like I'm forgetting some or missing some, but this is all I could find. There might be more lurking around somewhere that I forgot about. But here they are, 26 single depotted shadows that I had intended to finish. 
but did not. Ugh. Okay, we are nearing the end of this video. The last category is everything to do with lips. I feel like this is an underreported category once again. Like there's some products that I've forgotten about, but this is what I could find. I have two lip pencils that I was supposed to finish and could not do. This is Estee Lauder Spice. It's a sample, like a gift with purchase. I probably used almost half of the pencil, but it's still here. And this is an old Revlon lip liner and lip gloss duo in a not very pretty brown shade. I do like the liner though. It adds a lot of definition to my lips, especially when I'm wearing like a nude lipstick or lip gloss but the lip gloss I don't really use anymore. For traditional lipsticks, like traditional-ish, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine. It feels like I should have like a hundred, but I only have found nine. I have a deluxe sample of Tom Ford's Indian Rose, Indian Rose. Still have quite a bit of product left. Did not finish that. I have ColourPop BFF lippy sticks. I'm currently working on the liner, but I also had the lippy sticks in a project and did not finish it. I have this red shade from L'Oreal. It's called Blissful Cherry. It's basically brand new. I used it a little bit. Me and Reds. I have this MAC Coral shade in full speed. I love this. I was working on too many lipsticks at the time though and I didn't get nearly as much use out of this as, as I had hoped I would, but I love this. I have another red from Wet n Wild. This is the Fergie Wet n Wild in Saragina. I think I'm saying that right. This is an oldie, this is a Tarte aqua gel hydrating lip tint in the shade graceful i probably used about half more than half that's all i got left i have my number seven lip crayon in daydreamer i love this i have that much left I have my Revlon Lip Butter in Sweet Tart. Didn't get a whole lot of use out of that. It's a little too pink. I very rarely say the words too and pink together, but this is a little bit too pink. And finally, I have a Tart Lip Sculptor, Lipstick and Lip Gloss in VIP. I think these are just awesome. Love it. Love the shade. Just didn't get enough use out of it. For lip balms and or tinted lip balms, I have three. This is from Bare Minerals. It's Tangerine Trance. It's basic, it looks very bright and orangey, but it's basically sheer. I have this NYX Butter Lip Balm in Marshmallow. And of course, I have my Baby Lips in Pink Punch. This has been in a few different projects. I've probably used about Mm, not quite half of it. For liquid lipsticks, I have four, and two of them are samples. This is Meet Matt Hughes Committed. I think it's called Committed. I should really get back to this. I haven't touched this in a long time. Same thing with this one. This is the uh, Tarte birthday gift. I think it was called Birthday Suit. I think this was a Sephora birthday gift with purchase from a few years back, and this was in my 2020 Vision Project pan. I have my Lime Crime plushies and Gumdrop, and I have this Too Faced Melted Chocolate Liquefied Metallic Lipstick in Metallic Chocolate Diamonds. Okay, last but certainly not least, I have all of my lip glosses that I was supposed to finish, but didn't. Nine. There are nine here. That's a lot. I should really finish some of these. I have a hard time following through on lip glosses. I use them for a while and then I get tired of them and I want to switch to something different.
obviously. Otherwise, some more of these would be gone than there are. This is a Butter London lip gloss in the shade Blind Date. This is a big sample of Buxom Dolly. This is a little sample of Buxom Dolly. That's ridiculous. Both are about half gone. This is a Mary Kay sample in Red Passion. This is the NYX Extreme Shine Lip Cream in Natural. This is Kylie Lip Gloss in So Cute. This is the Carez Lip Gloss in Natural Purple. I had no idea this was called Natural Purple. I could have put this in 50 Shades of Purple. Oh well. This is the Urban Decay lip gloss that came with the original Naked palette. It's just called Naked. And finally, this is my Laura Mercier lip gloss in Opal. This is one of my favorite, all time favorite lip glosses ever. If you've never tried the Laura Mercier lip glosses, I would highly recommend them. I love them so much. I've used probably more than half of this and I should just use it up and finish it, but I'm hoarding it. <sighs> That is everything. I did it all in one sitting, but I've been here for like an hour and a half. It feels like this has been quite a job. If you guys don't know how Emily's Graveyard Project Pan works, there's two categories you could pull from. Either graveyard products or resurrection products, products that were previously in projects, but you didn't meet your goal on, or collecting cobwebs products, which don't necessarily mean that they were in a previous project, they're just getting old and they've been sitting around and haven't been getting enough use. So basically everything that I'm not currently project panning could be considered for that project, but I will be giving special consideration for some of these products in that project once it begins in a couple weeks. Which ones would you guys like to see me pan? That's my question. Out of everything I just showed you, what would you like to see me finish the most? What would give you the most pleasure seeing me get out of this stash? Because I will definitely consider that for my introduction to the Graveyard Project pan in a couple weeks. I'm really excited to be starting that project again. Does anybody have a graveyard as big as mine? I mean, I don't mean to brag, but I'm pretty sure I have the biggest graveyard out there. Got a lot of skeletons in the closet. <sighs> Project panning skeletons. That is it. I've been talking long enough. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.